I'd like to welcome everyone to the Vasculitis Foundation webinar today. I'm Kathy Olevsky, the host for the Vasculitis Foundation educational webinar series, and I'm also a patient living with MPA vasculitis. But today's presentation is one in a series for finding vasculitis information online. And understanding how to effectively research online medical information is necessary to be an empowered patient. The Vasculitis Foundation has put together this series to help us all find accurate and relevant information. Today, we will learn more about finding information when you're a newly diagnosed patient. And so we will learn the webinars are part of the Vasculitis Foundation's commitment to patient education. And we would like to support, we would like to thank our sponsors that support us, AstraZeneca, Amgen, and Novartis. Also today, Jennifer Gordon is with us helping us to, in this series, to discover the best ways to research vasculitis online. And Jennifer Gordon, as an introduction, is a biomedical researcher and also a vasculitis patient living with eGPA. So welcome, Jennifer. Thanks so much for helping us with this, uh, just our little tour of what newly diagnosed patients can do to research online. Thanks, Kathy. It's great to be here. Um, so. Let me uh, just start sharing. The Vasculitis uh, Foundation has actually um, redone its website recently and put some really great features together to help the newly diagnosed. So I thought it'd be a great place to start, like a one-stop shop, uh, to walk through some of these resources together. Um, so if you wanna find information about vasculitis, let's just say you're doing a search, vasculitis resources. Uh, so what comes up? Uh, so the first thing we see are some uh, sponsored <clears throat> sponsored activities here. And we've been covering searches in some of our other series, and you can uh, view more about that, um, whether or not these are uh, paid or unpaid, whether they are from, say, uh, .edu or a .org or a .com. Um, but if we scroll down a little bit past some of the sponsored sites, uh, then we start to get into uh, resources like uh, different medical centers. Uh, here's one from Hopkins. And then here's the Vasculitis Foundation. So if we go to the VF website, uh, here's the, the new outline. And up here in the corner is this button, newly diagnosed. So I think that the VF has been an amazing source of information for me when I was first diagnosed and continues to be to this day. I learned so much from uh, everything on the website, and I and I feel I can I really trust the information. So I'm, I was really excited to see uh, when they uh, put this button up here for newly diagnosed. So if we click on there, uh, maybe we can just walk through a few of these um, things. Um, Kathy, have you have you tried the new website? Yeah, I actually use the new website all the time. I sometimes am in social media groups, and people are asking questions about their doctor and that sort of thing. And so for newly diagnosed, this is actually a great resource to send them to. Yeah, I agree. Um, so uh, here's a tab for finding a doctor. One of the first things I think uh, people are, are looking for, uh, how do you find a, a, a good doctor who's a specialist in your area? And you can sort through here and some of the uh, areas that I think are really important um, so uh, you can you can pick what type of doctor you're looking for if you have a specialty, and then uh, they all come down in the list. I like the one here that lets you find vasculitis centers. So if we search, say, vasculitis centers in the United States, they have this blue tab at the top. Uh, and it's amazing to see how many there are now, because I remember when I was first diagnosed, there were only a handful. So it's great to see that this is increasing. And then if you're looking in your specific area, uh, you may need a, a specialist or rheumatologist, for example, uh, or you may decide if you live close to a center uh, to, to go there. Um, so a great source to find doctors that are, many of them are working really closely with the Vasculitis Foundation and attend our symposia and, and conferences and things like that. Um, another tab here, learning about vasculitis. This will take us to an area where you can pick on a specific uh, type of vasculitis to learn more. Uh, so you can find your type of vasculitis and scroll down. 
and find some facts, some Q and A's, and also some videos that may be specifically related to that type of vasculitis. Um, then we get into some more details where they kind of cherry picked some areas from different parts of the website. Um, uh, your treatment plan. And I, I really like the way they walk through here, some of the key um, points, how to uh, build, uh, build out your team, who are the members of your team, your care team, who's gonna be your head coach, how do you get ready for doctor's appointments, et cetera, how to advocate for yourself. Uh, again, an area where you can really spend a lot of time learning, preparing. Uh, I thought that this was a very thoughtful area. Uh, Kathy, did you want to comment on anything so far? Yeah, I just wanted to say that when you were in that build your treatment plan, that is one of the things that people ask about frequently is what type of doctor should be their lead in the situation? And this kind of gives you the information to choose that for yourself or to help you feel like you understand it better when you go in because you may see more than one type of doctor. You may see a rheumatologist as your might be your lead, but you need a nephrologist for kidney problems or a pulmonologist or upper respiratory doctor for those sort of symptoms. So this does kind of walk you through those things to help you make those decisions. Yeah, we often have lots of ologists on the team, and then you have to figure out how to manage them all, what their role is for each one. And that's where I think um, listening to some of the videos and uh, also talking with others to help you learn like what works best for you. What's the best approach for you for building out your team? Uh, here's another one, understanding glucocorticoids. This is you know, about prednisone, uh, a, a big thing for uh, many of us. Most of us have been on it at some point or another. Um, so there's a nice Q&A here uh, to talk about some of the major concerns about prednisone. And I know this is often one of the biggest challenges for those of us just starting treatment. Uh, and then, of course, some videos down here with specifics about uh, prednisone. Uh, and then there's some more tabs. Here's one about uh, being immunocompromised uh, and resources for that. Uh, of course, uh, having gone through COVID, we're all much more aware of that, I think, than we were in the past. Uh, and finding support. Uh, so there are many really amazing support groups uh, that are uh, coordinated by the Vasculitis Foundation. Uh, I participate in the EGPA Cafe. I really enjoy that. We just uh, uh, have that once a month. Some of these are weekly support groups. Some of them are very specific for uh, certain groups. Others are open to uh, anybody. And you can click through here and register. And I would really encourage anybody uh, who's newly diagnosed to try to reach out and connect. Um, it's a great source of information and reassurance and get your questions answered directly by people who are living with the same uh, experience that, that you may be facing. Yeah, I would really echo that, Jen. I would say that the uh, I've heard great things from people who participate in the support meetings in particular, just that because you can ask the questions that come to your mind after you've left your doctor's office and you don't know who to ask. And um, you can talk to people about how you feel when sometimes that's not what you've want to spend your time with with your doctor. I do, but not everybody does. So this is a, a great resource also. Yeah. So, you know, this one here, for example, the teen chat is really so that the teens get a chance to interact by themselves, but just about everything else is open for uh, care partners or family members or others that may be supporting you. So these resources are, are great for the family as well. Uh, and then there's another link down here uh, for uh, mind-body resources. Uh, and this is uh, linking to the, the Victory Over Vasculitis program. And, you know, Kathy, you and I are both involved in this program, and I've really enjoyed what we've uh, been putting together. Uh, and we'll, we'll have more, uh, more coming out soon, I think, in each of these areas. But uh, I think these are some of the most valuable resources, uh, patient to patient, sharing uh, how we deal with the uh, quality of life issues and uh, mental health and our wellness uh, and how to, to advocate for ourselves. Yeah, and the Victory Over Vasculitis um, program was 
started to encourage people that there is life still after you've been diagnosed with vasculitis. And that's why these three components are in there. Uh, I think sometimes people think it's just about physical wellness and movement, but it's really a very well-rounded program with a lot of information for all of us. Yeah, I agree. Um, so that was a tour of all of the, the links here under the newly diagnosed, but I'll just point out that uh, most of these resources you can find another way to link to through the main menu. Uh, you can subscribe to the e-newsletter to get more information, uh, uh, find out about all the events that are available, uh, go directly to the video library or the find a doctor tab here from the main menu and uh, contact us. Uh, if you need something, please contact uh, the Vasculitis Foundation. They read, they answer, they will connect you with somebody that has vasculitis that lives near you or your type of vasculitis. They're an amazing resource for all of us and they will get back to you. So I encourage you to connect with them in any way that, that you need. Yeah, I was just gonna reiterate that point about the contact us. You are going to reach a person if you hit contact us and they are gonna become invested in what it is that you need help with and they will personally guide you to those things. So it's always nice to know that that's not a bot, that, that is an actual person that's gonna to talk to you. Yeah, I agree. And and I think they get back pretty quickly too. So you won't, won't be left waiting. Great, so uh, before we end, uh, just a word of caution about searching for information online. Uh, so, you know, the Vasculitis Foundation, we believe is a trusted resource and the medical information that is on the VF website has been reviewed by doctors and is, you know, uh, vasculitis doctor approved, so to speak. Uh, but just a note of caution whenever you're searching online to pay attention to where you're getting your information from, because I think that uh, the, the uh, web is an amazing source of information and also of misinformation. Totally agree. Um, so, well, well, thank you, Jen, for sharing all of that information with us. Um, we have just this last little bit that you want to go over. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to mention we're doing a series, as you said in the beginning, and uh, uh, you can look for the other uh, recordings in this series. And um, please let us know if you have any ideas for in more information you'd like to hear about. Great, so thank you so much. If you will stop sharing for a minute so that I can share something with everybody before we go, we want to make sure that they know that we're saying thank you to our sponsors, um, Amgen, AstraZeneca, and Novartis for helping support having the uh, webinars and the medical information that we do through the Vasculitis Foundation. And thank you, of course, to the Vasculitis Foundation and Jen Gordon for joining us today. Well, thank you, Kathy. It's great to see you.